Hello bitches, welcome back to my channel. Can you believe that we are already on the last three freaking pages of this sketchbook? And now that I'm drawing on one of them, we really only have two pages left of this sketchbook. So to end this on a strong note, I wanna know what you guys would like to see from me. What do you want me to draw on the final two pages? Let me know in the comments below because I feel like I'm starting to run out of ideas too as to what to draw here. So I think it would just make a good last final impact if you all let me know what I should draw for my last two pages. So yeah, let me know in the comments below and let's get with today's draw with me. So one of the top questions I still get to this day on my videos are regarding how do you find your art style? And I've already made a video regarding that topic, which I will put up here on the top right. But even when you do find a new style or you find a style that you feel like really suits you, there are still moments and times where you're going to feel discontent still with your style because maybe your classmate, your colleague, your coworker, someone in your life Life has a style that is still more interesting than yours and you want to create that same appeal with your own art. So today's video topic is more going to be about how to stop giving a shit about wanting to find a style or whatever more so than how to find your style. And in this video, I'm going to be drawing my character Vera, who is one of my Instagram comics characters. And forgive me if you see this video blurring in and out because my stupid head keeps going going into the video frame because when I draw, I really wanna get up close to what I'm drawing, but I forget there's a camera right on top of me. So yeah, when I get really into things, this is just what happens. So forgive me if you just see random parts of a drawing showing up without me actually drawing it. Anyway, one of the easiest ways, in my opinion, to stop giving a shit about what your style looks like or how interesting it is, is to focus more on your skill level. And you've probably heard me mention this in one of my top art school tips videos or something like that, which I will also put here on the top right, because what I have noticed is that your style is going to naturally emerge from you trying to draw in the styles of shows, cartoons, or other artists that you like and naturally over time you're going to eventually have a compilation of all these different art styles that you've liked in your life mashed into one style which is your style because you're going to pick up things that you like from other artists but it will never be exactly like theirs just because you are influenced by different people so you're naturally going to be a summation of your personal inspirations. And you might be wondering, well, if my style is a combination of all of my favorite artists that I've, you know, referenced from before, shouldn't I be in love with my style if it's all of my favorite artists' styles mashed together in one? Well, the way that I like to think about it or make an analogy of it is that I feel like when you look at your style and you're just so used to it, it kind of feels like when you're stuck at your house all the time, but you don't really know what your house really smells like because you live there, you got used to it. But when you go to your friend's or someone else's house that you don't go to often, you might realize that you smell something, whether if it's good or bad, it could be great food or it could be their stinky shoes, who knows? You just notice it more because you're not used to living in their house. So that's the kind of symbolic reference I would like to make with your style, I guess. And it's like how others can see how beautiful you are when you can't. So in the meantime, what should you be doing with your art then if you're gonna stop focusing on finding what your style is? Well, I have mentioned before that you should probably focus on your skill level and actually learning to draw many different things, being able to draw various things in different angles, and just getting to be more comfortable with drawing things that you're not used to. The thing is, I feel like once you develop your glossary of all the things that you can possibly draw, you're going to eventually be able to pretty much draw anything once you really diversify the content that you draw. And when you bring it back to your typical stuff that you usually draw, and for me, it might be like girls or a devil or a mermaid siren, whatever. So that is kind of how I have worked on developing my own style is by just focusing on learning to draw well during my life drawing classes or just 
observational sketches in my sketchbook. So through that, I kind of eventually developed the style that I have right now. And I feel like my style tends to morph between Western and Eastern. And also sometimes I would like to go super anime, but sometimes I also want to go realistic. And after doing several student films at art school and working various jobs in animation where the styles were really different on the shows that I was on, I feel like I learned to care more about how I can adapt to different projects and thinking for myself and my future, how I can develop styles that fit projects more so than be like my only style. So the way that I think about art and styles now is more about how can I develop a style that will best suit this project, like a comic idea, a short animation film idea, or maybe a music video idea, who knows? I think more about how does a style fit this instead of like, how can I just find an art style that just defines who I am? Because I think just like your personality, you have many layers, you have many colors. There are so so many different parts of you and I feel like it is a little bit silly to just limit all of that complexity to just one style that you're capable of. Now there is nothing wrong with if you are the type of person who feels like you really like this one style that you work in. This is a style that you feel like really suits you and I think that's great. I just wanted to make this video to more so give an option or a path for others who are struggling with their styles to think about. And one of the things that I've really noticed while working in the industry is that after you work on all of these shows, you might think that people or your teammates might care about your style or how good it looks, but it's just funny because even though you work in art, people don't really think about how good your art is anymore once you start working in it. It's like the fact that they hired you already is because they know you're good. But once you're working a part of the team and stuff, it's more about how well do you understand how to make this fit intentionally to the theme of whatever project that you're working on. Pretty much over time, your styles become less about just being cool, unique, or interesting, and it becomes more of how you can help serve this bigger idea in the clearest way possible so that when someone watches this show, maybe they'll think like, oh, it is so scary because your style is more creepy or something that can be more ironic, like how Panty and Stocking has this Powerpuff Girl-like style almost, which you might be like, oh, it's a kid's show, right? But no, it's totally an adult show. And I feel like that plays really well in terms of just being ironic and funny. So before you start prioritizing what your art style should look like, I think that you should better off use that time to think about what types of projects or bigger idea concepts would you like to pursue in the future? What stories do you want to tell? What messages do you want to pass on to others? And think about what style can best help you effectively communicate those ideas. So in case if you've been wondering what I'm drawing on my sketchbook, I'm basically drawing different versions or different styles of my character Vera, who is on the top left. That is her default style whenever I draw her on my Instagram comics. And I truly believe that she is just a mishmash, pish posh, whatever of all of the styles that I've ever attempted with in the past. So the next one after that is a chibi style, probably a little bit closer to anime. And then the next one after that, I would say is still kind of anime, but not chibi style. Then the one afterwards is a little bit more of a prime time goofy version. To be honest, this is not my most favorite art style, but it is just one that I feel like I am capable of doing and I'm not afraid to draw in that style, but it's just not my most favorite top style that I would choose. Then following that on the bottom left, I would say this dot eyed character version of Vera is kind of more wholesome. Like I see this style more often for like illustration books or just very calming watercolor illustrations, I guess. It's a bit more soft and less extreme and it's kind of a little bit more of a universal style when you just give people dot eyes, I guess. Then afterwards, I would say it's another kind of anime style, except I want to give her a little bit more spice and just more spikes. And I made parts of her a little bit more angular. 
then following after that. I'm honestly not sure what style this is. All I could think of was my life as a teenage robot and just, you know, that type of Western cartoon, except I feel like my anime and Eastern cartoon side still shows through sometimes. It's not completely Western or completely Eastern. And then lastly, I tried for, I don't even know what this is. It's not really realistic. It just kind of reminds me of those graphic novels that attempt to go for a more realistic look, but you can still clearly tell that it's an illustration. And again, this is also not really my most favorite style in the world, but it is just one that if I must draw in this style, I will. So yeah, and here's just a page of the ways that I test all of my stuff. And I'm just gonna simply fill in the background with some pink spots because I think this is my favorite part about filling in sketchbooks is just tying it all together with a similar background or just one background to tie them all in together. So yeah. Anyway, to summarize everything that we've talked about in this video, I feel like the biggest reasons why we as artists don't feel that happy with our style is just simply because we got so used to it. We see it every day. We are the ones drawing it every day. So I feel like it is natural that we don't love our art as much as when we see somebody else's for the first time. And if you are currently dissatisfied with your style, instead of forcing a new style out of yourself, I would rather focus on trying to enhance your skills a bit more, try to get to draw everything that you possibly can to diversify your little drawing glossary. And then afterwards, I think that you should think about projects that you would want to be a part of or projects that you would want to start yourself and what type of style would best communicate this project idea and just work on that project through that style that might be more suitable for it. I feel like you learn a lot more through bigger projects and things that force yourself to draw something more than one time and to see some subject in more than one angle. And I feel like projects are a really great way to help you draw something in many ways as possible. Or if you're still really adamant on trying to find a style, I can suggest doing an exercise like this one where you just draw one character or one thing several times in different styles and see which one will stick. Anyway, I hope this video helped someone somewhere out there and I will see you all in the next one. Don't forget to let me know what should I do for the last two pages of my sketchbook. So peace out and stay wholesome, bitches.